Hey, good morning. This is Ed Ballou with Aquascape, and I'm here to talk to you about a little project that we have going on today. We have an existing customer, and the pond has a leak in it. So what we need to do is to remove some large boulders. So what I want to do is talk to you today about the tools, the equipment that we're going to need to move these large rocks, as well as some of the safety things that we need to think about, and some of the actual techniques. So the rocks that we're going to be pulling out today are these guys right over here. So some of the tools that we're going to need to move these large rocks. So we have several different straps that we're working with. This is called an eye to eye. So this is a four inch strap. This is pretty heavy duty. We're going to wrap it around the rock and I'll show you some of these techniques later. And we create a cinch point. So when we do that, when we lift, it actually gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So when it pulls on that rock, the heavier the rock is, the tighter the grip it actually has. Other straps that we use for some smaller rocks, this is called a continuous loop, really versatile strap. This is only a one inch wide, but the lifting capacities on these things are just unbelievable, 2,000 pounds. The nice thing about this is it's real quick and easy to work with. It's nice and soft and easy to get around the rock. One of the most versatile ones we use, a little bit wider. This also is a endless loop, but this is a two inch wide. You can see this one has got some battle scars on it, so it actually takes a pretty good beating. Some of the other tools that we need, digging spades to get uh, in and around the rocks, a good solid pry bar. This one, I am definitely fond of, has this nice wide flat area here. It can get underneath the rocks and it has a wide point where it actually could compress. So instead of just being a bar, you know, you have a, a three inch wide area. So it kind of spreads the weight out and it doesn't sink down, especially when you're working on top of rubber liners and things like that. Then we also have just our standing uh, digging shovel, a staple in the landscape industry. And then right over here, that's gonna do the heavy lifting. So we have this big bobcat here today. This is the largest rubber track machine that we can get. We don't need special permits or anything with this. The rocks that we're gonna be pulling out, about 3,000 pounds or so, maybe a little bit more than that. Our biggest challenge is getting the machine into it. You can kinda of see we started pulling out some of the plant material. Next rock that's gonna come out is this guy right here. And then we're gonna move the machine closer so we could have access over into the pond. All right, so our challenge with this rock is, this has been set for many years. Uh, so what we have to do is we kind of loosened it up. It was recessed down into the soil, three to four inches, which makes it for a good look. Locked it in place, but now during the removal process, we have to kind of dig out, we have to get under it so we can get our strap in place. So again, we're gonna use this two inch continuous loop. So what Josh and I just did was we kind of dug out a little bit of this edge. We don't need to go deep underneath the rock because all we want to do is lift it up. Then we want to be able to pull the straps out easy. If you get the straps, way underneath the rock it turns into a big battle to get them out afterward and so I want this to be right in the middle of the stone we're gonna get this other side right around that little corner so this is a little bit of a challenging rock and it's because it's basically it's like a big flat pancake so it doesn't have a good solid edge on it anywhere so during this process clean the soil off so we can get a good bond onto the rock and see if we can find that little bit of an edge So the other thing from a safety perspective, whenever you're working with heavy equipment, I always want to have eye contact with the operator. I don't want to be on that side of the machine because then that arm gets right in the way. So I always stay on the one side where he could see me. Nope, that's not how it's supposed to go. <laughs> So the other nice thing about having these straps, so you go up to one point, and what I could do is I could easily spin this rock in any direction. Sometimes if these are really wide, it's difficult to spin the stone. I like to have that flexibility where I could move the rocks around, which gives me a lot more design freedom. One of the other things that I do is I always have the rock at arm's length for me. One, it gives me a, a mind-body connection with the stone. I could feel everything that's happening. If the strap is slipping, I could actually feel that actually occurring. It's also going to allow me to push myself away if anything happens. Safety is the number one concern always when we're working around heavy equipment. All right, take it out to me a little bit. So I'm just going to bring it out. We're just going to set it down so it's out of our way. So 
So with the strap being right on the edge, it makes it really easy to take out. We don't have to move the rock around or anything. It's just barely on there. Again, it makes it harder to lift the stone. You can see it's, it actually slipped off on the first time, which actually happens. So we have a set way of doing everything. So we strap the rocks the same way. So whenever we're on a project, all the guys on the project know exactly how to strap it, what we're looking for, and the different safety precautions that we're gonna uh, have when we're moving large boulders such as this. So we removed the largest rock out of here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the straps off of this stone and then we have to move this rock as well. So our problem here, the pond was drained of water for more than a season. A nest of chipmunks got in and they went behind these boulders and they started chewing through the liner. And the reason we know that they came in from this side was the fabric on the other side is completely intact. So what I wanna do, I've kind of stabilized this rock it's not gonna go anywhere on us. So he lowered the pressure off. Now look at that, all I have to do is pull these off and we are ready for our next boulder. We're gonna pull this rock out, check for damage under here, reassemble everything, put this one back and then drop this one back in between so it wedges itself right in. Call it a day. So we're putting in our concrete cloth right now. So this is a heavy duty material. It has a PVC membrane on one side that always goes up against your liner. And then you have the other part is like a geotextile. You can see it's got like a lot of webbing and stuff in there. And then it's embedded with Portland cement. You could put it together in any configuration and it's not going to crack or open up. So this really creates a strong, durable surface. Again, we have massive boulders going in. We don't want to come back in here again to fix any problem. So we patched everything. I highly doubt anything is ever going to get back in here, but while we have all this stuff out, this is the time to do it. So we're going to place this material in place and we're going to pick these rocks up, put them back in, in position. It's going to create a really nice soft surface for us. So it actually is a, a rock pad. So it's a good protectant for the big boulders as well. like that perfect you know, fighting it so we just got to reform all that stuff get the lights back position now we got to get this big old beast back in but you can see by the shape of this one this one's actually pretty easy so you see it's got this little notch over here so that's a great spot to get that strap same thing over here so if I go all the way on the bottom of this one it'd be really difficult to get the strap out so I'm gonna look for some of those edges I want to get my cinch point right here in the middle you see this is kind of a narrow rock got to be hanging pretty vertical, you know, in order to get it back in position. I'm gonna take the cinch point and I'm gonna offset it slightly to the back so it's not exactly in the center. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is such a heavy rock. When we lift it, it's actually gonna stretch and it's gonna pull it a little bit. Once I get those straps and I pull it tight and I can see where that's at, now I'm gonna, again, offset it a little bit to the back. See where it's at? Always keeping tension on stuff. The most dangerous thing, when you don't have tension on the rock, they get just a little bit loose. It's not in that same spot that you were originally thinking of. That's when the straps slip out. So you always wanna be looking at that stuff, double checking, you see all these little pins and things like that. You wanna make sure that those all lay flat. You don't want to have that rub on anything. Projects that I've been on where just the simple movement of that and it sliced right through in a massive rock fell. So you always want to be looking at everything during the entire lifting process. Okay. 
So I hope you enjoyed these tips on strapping up all these large rocks. We really enjoy doing this stuff. If you need to use this type of information, please utilize the vlog for training new employees, for doing safety. Our goal is to not only create beautiful functioning ecosystems, but we want to do it safely, we want to do it efficiently. So that's why we're producing all of this information. So if you like this stuff, please like, comment, subscribe, let me know your thoughts, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day.